Hello everyone. I'd like to share a little something with you that uh, the Lord has been speaking to me uh, over the last uh, few weeks, really throughout the month of, uh, of October. We've, um, as, as we're filming this, we've just come to the end of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. And for me, it just seemed like it was significant this year. And uh, several things happened uh, over the course of the last few weeks that I believe are prophetic in nature that kind of point to where we are historically, where, where we are in church history. But uh, just as a brief synopsis, uh, you know, there, there were three feasts that, that, that were given to Israel, three biblical feasts. They're called the Feasts of the Lord. Not just the Feast of Israel, the Feasts of the Lord. Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And uh, they, both, they all three denote divine appointments. They're called moeds. And the word moed means a divine appointment. God had a, an appointment with humanity. They did types and shadows in the Old Testament only to the point to, point to the reality that, uh, that the Lord Jesus himself was coming to earth. And we know that the Lord, of course, that was tabernacled in flesh. God tabernacled in flesh during Passover. And uh, we also know that uh, he released his spirit, the very spirit that empowered him to do all that he did back to the Father on the day of Pentecost. It was another divine appointment. God descended from heaven as the appearance of the Holy Spirit and rested upon 120 and tabernacled in them. And, and then we have the, the feasts of the seventh month. Passover and Pentecost are associated with the Lord's first coming. Tabernacles is associated with the Lord's second coming. And so prophetically, we have a divine appointment in our generation. God is going to manifest Himself in just as real a way as He did in Passover, as He did in Pentecost. A manifestation of God in His people, empowering His bride to do everything that He said He would do. There will come a day down the road, not too far from now, when the Lord will come in His glorified body, His immortal body, and set His feet on the Mount of Olives, and it will split in two and all that it says will happen at that time. But before that happens, we're waiting for the secret coming. That's what it says in John chapter 7. The Lord went to the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a type and a shadow of, of what we will see today. But He came secretly. He's going to come to a body of people and, and empower them. It won't, be a, it won't be Him coming like He does in His glorified body. He's going to come in a very clear manifestation of His Spirit to inhabit His bride and do all the things that He said He would do through her, the very works that Jesus did, we will do. And so that's the, that's the prophetic significance of, of, of the Feast of Tabernacles, and we're anticipating that. We're believing for that now. I do. Uh, something happened this year. Uh, there was a shift in the heavens. There was. I saw something just the other night where the heavens opened and something came to the earth, and I was excited. It was a glorious, glorious thing. And I'll talk about that in, a, in another blog. But the Feast of Tabernacles is a time of great celebration because the harvest had come in, the fruit harvest. The oil and the wine had come in. And for Israel, as a type and a shadow of that, there was just celebration and joy and gladness and dancing and singing and cymbals and, and, and a, a time of just, you know, happiness during the feasts of the seventh month because the harvest had come in. God had poured out His water. He had poured out His rain and brought in the harvest, the, the olives and the wine. And so that's why I have a great deal of confidence that our day is going to be typified with joy. It's going to be victory. It's going to be gladness, rejoicing, celebration. I know things are going on out there. I know things are going on in the world and there's hardship and difficulties and even judgments will come. But before that happens, there's going to be a great outpouring of the Spirit. The Bible shows that. I believe the Bible is clear. The end of the age, it says in Matthew 13, is the harvest. And so we're going to see our harvest. We're going to see it. God's going to come. He's going to do everything He said He would do. I, I'm believing for that. I believe we're shifting from a time of maybe sorrow and difficulties and stress into a time of rejoicing and happiness and gladness and breakthrough and and all that goes with that. I believe that. But there's one point I want to make in this little blog, you know, that uh, has stood out to me. Um, there's many. I'm going to probably do a series of these little blogs about the Feast of Tabernacles. But one of them is John chapter 2 and verse 11. The Lord Jesus comes out of the wilderness and uh, is empowered by the Holy Spirit. The very thing I'm talking about. 
Uh, and one of the things, one of the things that is identified with the Feast of Tabernacles is that it's called the Feast of Glory, the Feast of Glory. And we get that because Solomon, during the Feast of Tabernacles, dedicated his temple. And when he did, the glory of God descended into the, attempt, into the temple and the 120 priests could not even stand to minister because of the glory, the manifested glory. And because of that, we can point to today when we see the literal fulfillment of tabernacles, it will be in a manifestation of the glory, the kabod, the weightiness of God, the goodness of God, the love of God. I had an experience back in March where I was in a bubble of perfect love and the Lord has told me since then it's glory, that His glory is His perfect love and His perfect love is His glory. And it was like a bubble of just divine everything. <laughs> No place for anything from the spirit of this world. So it has to do with glory. So when the Lord Jesus comes out of the wilderness, uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit, he goes to Cana. You know, we all know the story in John 2 of the wedding of Cana. And they ran out of wine. And I think that also speaks, you know, of the tabernacles of the wine harvest. But, but uh, he turns the water into wine. And there's a very, some very interesting language It says, um, I, I'm just read it to you. It says uh, this, this turning the water into wine, this miracle was the beginning of his signs. The word there means attesting miracles. This was the beginning of his signs, his attesting miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. And he manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. He manifested His glory. In other words, attesting miracles, signs and wonders are a manifestation of the glory. When there is a manifestation of the glory, there will be attesting signs and, mir and miracles. There will be the miraculous. And, and I want to release that. I just want to release a new hope in us today to see attesting miracles, signs and wonders that only God can take credit for, that no man can produce that can't be mustered, it can't be produced, divine intervention, because it's going to be the manifestation of His glory, a manifestation of His glory. All the earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Israel missed their opportunity to go into the promised land when the ten spies came back with a negative report, and God pardoned their iniquity, but He said, as surely as I live, the Lord said, as surely as I live, that means He's not going to die. As surely as He lives, I will fill this earth with my glory. And that hour has come. We're entering that span of history when we're to manifest glory, manifest goodness, manifest attesting miracles. Why? Because it eradicates unbelief. His disciples, the instructed ones in the way of the kingdom, that's what disciples mean, instructed ones in the ways of the kingdom believed. They believed. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we don't just believe in God, but believe God? <laughs> just believe that He will do all that He said He would do despite circumstances, despite the things that are happening in the world. He will do what He said He would do. So I want to leave you with that today. Just a sense of hope. I hope I have imparted a measure of hope. That's what I feel today as we have come just a day or two ago at the end of this Feast of Tabernacles. There's hope. There's hope for joy and gladness and celebration and victory. And so I release that right now to you. I pray that God will ignite something in you that, that is no longer the hope deferred, but desire fulfilled that is a tree of life, the tree of life manifested in your heart. Lord, release that to your people as we move into this new day with an anticipation that you're going to do extraordinary things because you're good. The glory of God is the goodness of God. Grant that, I pray, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.